All right, so welcome back, guys. It's been a very long time since the last time I did a Yu-Gi-Oh deck, like deck profile. Basically, oh my gosh, it was like 2015 since the last time, but the last time I did it seriously was like 2013. But so many new cards have been coming out here recently. I've been practically making a shit ton of decks. Some of them are old decks that I've been like updating because of all the new support. But one of them that I wanted to touch on was like Black Wings. Obviously, Black Wings we know got a lot of support with the Darkwing Blast here recently. Unfortunately, I was making this deck, uh, actually all of these decks, before the September... September? No, October ban list. So, a, a couple of the cards like the Chaos Ruler uh, got hit. But I, I still incorporate them because I already have a lot of these decks in real life. So I'm not going to like optimize them beyond the ban list because I, I just use these to duel against my friends but this deck is like super fun I was like trying to work on black wings because I have a friend down in Texas that likes black wings and a friend here in Maryland that likes black wings and trying to come up with some sort of solution to speed them up make them a lot more competitive this is the recipe that I was able to come up with and yes obviously it has more than 40 cards but I think that it's worth the trade-off to have additional cards so I'll, I'll quickly go through it and then i've obviously got some duels one thing i like about edda pro is that the ais are actually extremely intelligent if, if you're dueling against the proper decks and they give you an opportunity to really test run it before you're ready for like competitive play so the main thing here is i guess uh i don't know how expensive this deck would be now that darkwing blast is out the main deck's probably going to run you uh, well, I mean Gale and Boar can be a little bit expensive, but if you're looking in the right places on like TCG player and same thing with Samoon uh, I guess that's how you pronounce it. I don't know. I just call him the poison guy uh, It can run you around 50 to 60 bucks for all the cards in the main deck and then the extra deck I mean it, d it depends on what you want to run But if you run this format it could run you anywhere between like 20 to 30 bucks so thankfully when I was over in Japan during the summer the OCG version, so right, the ones that came out in the Darkwing Blast, the Synchros, were super expensive. This guy, b b I never even pronounced his name because I always just call him the Synchro Tuner Blackwing. So he's the Wicked Wind. He was so, he was like 35 American dollars. And this guy was like 23 American dollars, the Black Winged Assault Dragon. That was ridiculous. I was like, hell no, I'm not going to buy that. Like while I was over there, I did buy some really cheap. Uh, traps and monsters that were like 10 uh, basically 10 cents uh, the equivalent of 10 uh, no 15 cents I think but anyway let's just go ahead and get in the deck profile so I really like black wings I'm more of um, a Usain Jack kind of guy but I also like to crow and black wings have always been extremely competitive over the years so they've slowed down at times but they're picking back up again that's the reason why they're starting to get a little more expensive so the poison guy basically you want to start off with him He's really good. Think of him as the guy that you need to open up with. If you see him in your hand and you've got another Blackwing, you can banish that Blackwing. And one of the things about like Allure of Darkness, why you might actually want to run three Allures of Darkness, is because it's okay if you banish your Blackwings. You've got folks like th this chick, the uh, the South Wind, and uh, what, what was the other one? I think this spell card as well let me see if this is a yeah so if it's a banished black wing you can pull it back you can special summon it so even if they aren't going to the grave but rather being banished like you'll do with shamal a lot of the times you can bring them back using the south wind or the black feather whirlwind so don't worry about it and, and it's very useful actually i think even even this trap card here the twin shadow you can use your banished black wings to perform extra synchro summon so don't worry about it i really like this guy you basically open up with him to banish a black wing from your hand and then you get to normal summon him and bring a black whirlwind from your deck to the field so then when he gets normal summoned uh you activate black whirlwind and i like to pull a lot of the times this guy the phantom oh is that his real name i thought he was always the illusory spark but i guess they changed his name to so sudry or whatever this guy I don't really care what these people's names are because I just use them. I, I don't pay attention to what their names are. They're, they're not like the uh, the Gale or the Bora, the the, um, the classics. I don't really care about their names. But I like to pull this guy out because he is a searcher 
for cards that mention like Blackwing Dragon. So you can actually pull your counter traps to your hand using this guy. So if you summon this guy, you get Black Whirlwind, then you get to extra normal summon practically because you still haven't used your full normal summon. I don't know how it exactly works, but this guy allows you a free normal summon. And then you get your regular normal summon. Bring out this guy, you get to add one of your cards that mentions Blackwing Dragon in its name. And uh, you get to add another card because Black Whirlwind is every time you normal summon a Blackwing monster, you get to add another one. So then you can pull like a, well, how much attack does he have? Like 1400. So you could pull a Gale. You could pull, I like to really pull, pull his Harmaton guy, the, uh, the Dust. I like to pull him out because he can modify his level, but you can also pull out, I, I guess, uh, Bata. He's pretty good, right? Because he mentions Blackwing Dragon. Yeah, he mentions Blackwing Dragon, so you can pull him as a result of Black Whirlwind or as a result of the Phantom Glimmer's effect. So th this, oh man, this deck is just so freaking good. My friend, who's like, man, Blackwings are too slow. And then he saw me open up, like going first and also going second with this deck. And he's like, holy crap, I want to run a Blackwing deck now. So obviously they're very powerful. And that that's just this one guy being able to pull off all this combo here. And then you've got Chris the Krakadon. He's basically like a Bora, except he can only special summon himself from the hand when there's a Blackwing on the field once. But I only run two of them, so that way you don't accidentally like have two of them starting off in your hand. But he's very good. Uh, I think what, he has another effect that I don't really use. What is it? The you can only, Once per turn, this card cannot be destroyed by spell trap effects. So, I mean, he can't be torrentialed. At least once, unless you summon another one, and then I guess they have another Torrential. But he, he's pretty good because he's that level 4, so you can help to make your... Well, actually, a whole bunch of things are possible in this deck. Now, I used to never run Blackwing Dragon in my Blackwings deck way back in the day. The the version that I used to run in Tag Force 5, Tag Force 6, and then also when they came out with the support like Obsidian Hawk Joe several years ago and this No Thung the Starlight... When they came out with them back in the day, I, th I think that was around the same time they brought up the Assault Black Wings. I, um, th I, it, it was okay to be able to summon all the level 7s, but the level 8s, which you practically only had Black Wing Dragon, he didn't really calculate into my strategy at all. Now that there are so many Black Wing Dragon cards, like the Twin Shadow, the Counter Traps, Black Feather Whirlwind even mentions Black Wing Dragon. So, th again, this is uh, searchable if you wanted to, using his effect, because he searches one card that mentions Black Wing Dragon. But um, he he's a big, he's a much bigger factor, and you'll actually see that I use him a lot of the times to summon my Big Beater. And then, because I'm able to summon my Big Beater using him and the Synchro Tuner guy, uh, the Wicked Wind, once they go to the grave, you'll be able to free special summon the Black Winged Assault Dragon. And that's a really good opening turn play. But moving along, so Bora, I really like him. You run three of them because he's basically a free special summon. If you have to, I think I maybe once have normal summoned him. So that way I can get Black Whirlwind's effect. Then you can do that. But I really like him for Gen, I, Gen X ally Birdman, right? Same thing with Gale. You bounce him back to the hand or you bounce Gale back to the hand and then they get free special summon again it's it's another way to get an easy level three tuner onto the field same thing with zephros I, I i typically like to oh so that's one thing that i do need to mention with the poison guy that black whirlwind if it stays on the field at the end of the turn when you end your turn right it will go to the grave and you take how much damage is it a thousand so one of the themes of black wings is taking damage right because Blackwing Dragon can just absorb it as a Black Feather counter. And he'll lose 700 attack. But then, of course, you can obviously dish it back out like tenfold to your opponent when the time comes. So you take 1,000 damage. But if you're smart, like me, and you send Zephros to the grave, and then you bounce that Black Whirlwind back to your hand to free special summon Zephros and just don't play it again, because there's really no point in it, then it won't go to the grave. You won't take 1,000 damage, and you'll get to keep it for next turn when you perform some more normal summons. So it's very good. So I basically already talked about uh, Zephyrus. The main reason why I have him in here is the free special summon. He's a level 4, which I like. So when you summon the Wicked Wind and you send Zephyrus from the deck to your grave to make him a level 4, you then get to do stuff with Zephyrus in the grave, which is really nice. But the idea is it's very easy to summon Blackwing Dragon. He's level 8. 
Then you just made the Wicked Wind level 4. 8 plus 4, they're both synchros, so now this guy gets the bonus effect, the uh, Onimaru. He gets the bonus effect of being able to pump his attack up to 6,000 during the damage step. So if they're attacking, or if he's attacking, and, and, and he's obviously involved in the battle, then he gets to pump up to 6,000, which is really nice. Also, this guy cannot be destroyed by card effects, so he, he's pretty good. But uh, I mainly use him for the 6,000 attack. And then you've got Shamal. I used to have three of Shamal, and I realized that it's not that important. It's actually more important... I used to have three Shamal and one Black for the Whirlwind. I realized that it's more important to actually have two Black for the Whirlwind than just having two of the Shamal. She's a level 4 tuner. I prefer her in the grave rather than in my hand. So she can discard herself so that way you can play a Black for the Whirlwind straight from your deck. And that's super good. She also has a second effect. I think it's when you synchro summon? Hold on, let me see. If a Black Wing Synchro Monster or a Black Wing Dragon is special summoned to your field, it doesn't have to be a synchro summon. It could just be a special summon, right? So, Monster Reborn. I mean, you could potentially... Oh, jeez. Actually, I might want to throw that in as a... Uh, or at least as a consideration. Because Monster Reborn is pretty freaking good. I mean, it's at one, right? Uh, until they errata it. I mean, they're going to eventually errata it like they did with the stupid brain control and change of heart and uh, Black Witch of the Black Forest and Sangin and all that shit. But for right now, it's pretty good. So you would get to activate her effect. You can banish her, which obviously you can get her back eventually with Black Feather Whirlwind or with the South Wind or using her in Twin Shadows effect. And then you get to bring one of your, was it banished or... You can, can just go toggle one black wing monster in the grave? Oh, no, no, it has to be in the grave. And then you take 700 damage. Well, you'll obviously want to be able to do this when black wing dragons on the field so that way you get that free black feather counter, absorb it so that way you're not taking the damage. But a lot of the times I'll have stuff like a boar or a gale in the grave or, uh, or, um, what is this guy? The Hormat in the dust. So you've been able to send it to the grave due to some effect. And then you can just get it right back and do a free special summon. It's actually very quite good, so I like Shamal a lot. And then I've already talked about the Sudri, the Phantom Glimmer. He is so good. I never use his effect to tribute a monster to special summon a token, though. And then you take 700 in. I've never used that. I imagine that people probably do, but I've never run into the situation where I needed to. So, as of right now, uh, it's unnecessary. I consider it unnecessary. I used to run two of the Southwind, but she's not really so good and she is definitely searchable because she mentions black wing dragon in her hand so you can search her out using the phantom glimmer's effect but i do like her what once she's in the grave you can actually then go ahead so, so many of these cards if you want to stay competitive in this meta these days like we're long past the days of black wing dragon you normal summon then special summon special summon synchro you need to be able to keep up hand resources otherwise you're going to fall behind your opponent need to have cards to activate in the grave as well uh, secondary effects right she has many a time allowed me to add black feather counters and even wedge counters to the appropriate target so that way i can activate stuff like blackwing full armor master or blackwing assault dragons effect because you'll you'll see in particular cases where having the four or more black feather counters, i'm reading the last line basically uh, you can tribute this card with four or more black feather counters on it, destroy all cards on the field. Sometimes you need to just nuke the field. There's a reason that I don't run a black rose dragon in here, because it's unnecessary. But she is basically a blizzard. Oh, excuse me. She's basically a blizzard, but instead of blizzard targeting black wings that are in the grave, she will target black wings that have been removed from play. So the, the banish pile. And she's a level four, so that's... You grab another level 4 non-tuner, and then you've got yourself a Blackwing Dragon really freaking easily. Gen X Ally Birdman already talked about why I keep him in here. You bounce back. Uh, uh, try to go for the Boars and the Gales, because they can just special summon themselves right back. But there might be a, a, a case in which you want to bounce back someone else, so that way you can use their effect in the hand. But Oh, actually, I, I did. I did that with Shamal one time. I think I special summoned Shamal for free. And... I wanted to be able to use her effect to get the Black Feather Whirlwind before I Synchro Summon. So I actually used Genox Allied Birdman to bounce back Shamal. I think I still have the replay of that. And then I activated Shamal's effect once it bounced back to my hand and then discarded it. So it's very good. Gale, need I even say anything? If you're here for Black Wings, you already know what Gale does. Extremely good. One Blizzard, 
It's searchable, very easy to bring your hand with uh, Black Whirlwind, and you need to have at least one, because there are times that you need to make that easy level six. I, I almost never summon No Thung the Starlight, but the Wicked Wind, I summon every duel. I, I think every duel. This guy, uh, Harmata in the Dust, he's very expensive right now. I don't want to know why. I guess it's because he's fairly good. I only run two of him, because I, I think that three is unnecessary. He's one of those... It, it seems like the olden days. Remember those where it says, like, once per turn, like Lumina the Light Sworn, whatever she is. And these cards where it's like... It, it just says if you have a Blackwing monster on the field, you can special summon it. Nowadays, it's not once per turn. It's You can only use this effect once once per turn so it's no longer if it leaves the field and comes back you can use its effect again so it's seen as a new monster it's you already used it previously so if you bring out another one it, it's not able to do it and same thing with these you can only special summon these monsters like this for free from your hand once this turn it's so stupid i hate it but you know i guess they've got to balance it somehow otherwise it'd be really freaking good so he can level modulate he will be able to copy, or not copy, I guess, technically, he will take a level of an existing black wing monster on the field and add it to his two. So this is very good if you've got an odd number. So like the Gale, that's pretty well it. I mean, I guess an Orochi, uh, Orochi, but that almost never happens. It's usually Gale if I want to make an easy, well, anything really. But a lot of the times I'm using him in order to make... Uh, my Blackwing monsters down here almost never is it for a Blackwing dragon, but you can also make a couple other things every now and then you can make a level 8 Anyway, the point is He's very good. He can level modulate and he's a free special summon once per turn Moving on to Vata the emblem of wandering. Oh, is that what his name was? It was always Vata the knave for me But I, I they change their name sometimes when they come to TCG Point being he's another one of those he can special summon himself from the hand once for free this is very important. You want to, when you special summon him for free, you want to be able to use his effect, which is during the main phase, you can send this card on the field to the grave, along with one or more non tuna Blackwing monsters from your deck, so that the total level is sent equal exactly eight. And if you do special summon one Blackwing Dragon from your extra deck, also you cannot special summon. Uh, that part doesn't matter because obviously my extra deck fits that requirement. The thing is, you want to send stuff. I almost always will send Zephros and Chinook. That's who I like to send in order to make this guy. Because then I can activate Zephros' effect in the in the grave. I almost never want to send... I know that some people, they like to run... What is his name? Uh, Blackwing. This guy. Zonda the Dusk. So, I don't really like him. Because he's really only good if you're also running this guy, Kunai the Drizzle. And I've run that variant before, and it's just not very consistent. So, I like to send a Zephyrus if possible, and then I, I would almost never send Phantom Glimmer. You really want to be able to normal summon him, to be able to get his effect. Because he is so good. He's like a, a broken-ass Stratos. He's, he's way better than a Stratos, in my opinion. So, you've got Assault Synchron. Okay, so one of the things that happened in the last two weeks, I think, is Assault Synchron happened. When this guy comes out, I'm throwing him in my Crow Hogan deck, my Jack Atlas deck, my Fudo USA deck. You better believe it. This guy is fucking lit. Oh my god. Obviously, he was made for Black Wings because look, look at the character. It's, it's a bird in a cockpit that's supposed to be, I think, representative of the color and design of the Blackbird, right? The, the D wheel that Crow drove in the anime. And then also, you know, it's him also because it says. Then take 700 damage. So you special summon him for free, and then you take 700 damage. So I guess it's not technically for free. But if you've got Blackwing Dragon on the field, it is. And then you can only summon Synchro Monster for the rest of the turn. Who cares? He is so freaking good in the Jack Atlas deck and in the Yusei deck, my Stardust deck, because of his last effect. When a monster, when a, uh, hold on, let me get this right. A Dragon Synchro Monster is tributed or banished, you can banish him in the grave to then special summon it right back. I've, I've tributed, or I guess banished, my Shooting Majestic Star Dragon and my Red Supernova Dragon in, in different situations, right? One in the Jack Atlas deck and one in the Fudo Yusei deck. And then Special Summoned it right back. So I get to still attack with it. Even though my opponent was trying to do some shit, I negated it and I just bring it right back. And no fear. No fear. 
This guy is so freaking good, and he's a free level two tuna, basically. So I really like him. Um, definitely worth adding an extra card in there. So even if that puts you at 41, add this little guy. He is so good. And then uh, for the the Yusei deck, because he's a Synchron, he's also a target for anything that's like Toonie, stuff like that. Chinook, I don't know how good he's going to be. He's a super rare in Darkwing Blast, but his ability to, especially if you have a Synchro Monster on the field, w w either a Blackwing or a Blackwing Dragon, uh, Synchro Monster on the field, then he can do be a quick effect and... What exactly is he? He's like a, an effect veiler and they lose 700 attack. It's okay, I guess, but doesn't it target? Yeah, it targets. So it's not like it's going to help you get over a Dragoon or anything like a Dark Eyed, uh, Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. But eh, whatever. Vayu, you only run one of him. He's nice if you have to send him to the grave and you're able to perform a Synchro Summon within the grave. I might actually end up taking him out. I don't know. Oroshi, he's like one of those guys that special summons himself once per turn. For free, if this card is sent to you, you can target one of them. Ah, th th that's not that important. But hey, sometimes it is important. You know, they've got a freaking Exod the Defense Master or whatever the hell. He's got like zero attack in Florida. What is his name? Exod? No. Defense. Oh, here he is. Exod. Oh, two X's. What the fuck? What does he think? He's an X saver? Master of the Guard. Switch him. Let me see. This one of those cards cannot be special. Oh, this Sphinxes. He's found the North Mountain first one. Yeah, dude. Put this guy into attack mode. Oh shit! Now you're in trouble. So that, 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 that's the reason why I run him is mainly just for the level one, so that way you can help make your abyss. He's the main guy that's going to help you make your abyss. And then Allure of Darkness, you've got all dark monsters, right? You have a Gen X ally Birdman you don't want. Uh, you've got a Poison Wind that can't be normal summon for free because he's you've got shit on the field. Go ahead and Allure of Darkness it. it, it again, remember you can always bring these guys back like. Uh, South Wind and Black for the Whirlwind, who we haven't even gotten to it yet. And then Twin Shadow, you can get your shit back, so have no fear. Black for the Whirlwind. This card is so good. It says if you synchro summon a dark monster, it doesn't even say it has to be a black wing monster or a black wing dragon. It just has to be a dark synchro. Holy crap, you can target one of your black wing monsters or black wing dragon. That is banished or in your grave with less attack than the that special summon monster. Special summon it. Once per turn, if a dark monster you control will be oh I forgot about this part. Once per turn, if a dark monster you control will be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can remove black one black feather counter from your field instead. Again, a good reason to be able to use Southwind's effect in the grave to place a black feather counter somewhere on one black wing dragon, because then you can remove it. To save yourself with Black Feather Whirlwind's effect. So Black Feather Whirlwind's is extremely important. But basically, you have to run this card. I would suggest two of them. Three Black Whirlwind. Do I really need to explain this card? It's so good. Run three of them. You'll notice that there's no Kalutes in here. Getting an extra 1400 attack, it's just really not that important. More often than not, he's kind of dead. If you want, you can run one of them because he's searchable. But I just really don't see him as necessary anymore these days. You'll, you'll be able to overwhelm your opponent just with your Synchro Monsters alone. I, I don't think that Kalut's necessary to punch another 1400 over them. So Twin Shadow, this card, I often don't even set it. I often am just activating it during my turn because if you have two or more Blackwing Monsters, you can just, what, what, where does it say? If you control two or more Blackwing Monsters, you can activate this card from your hand. It's so freaking good. And um, I'll typically go for a Blackwing Dragon for free. I, I can set it. In order to, if my opponent is targeting something in my grave, and then I'll just use it up instead to summon a synchro monster. But honestly, you got to run two of these. You have to. The fact that you can recycle your banished materials as well, and it says that are banished and or in the grave. So one could be banished, one could be in the grave, and bada boom, bada bing. You know what I'm saying? Hey, forget about it, bada bing. You know what I'm saying? Not really, but let's do it. It's so good. Uh, I have to run Black Sonic. With Dragoons out there lurking, I'm going to bait him into using something so that way he negates and then he's going to attack and I'll Black Sonic his ass. And he's gone. Never to be seen again because next turn I'm running him full through. I don't even know what that means, but he's dead. Okay, and then you got Blackbird close. I haven't seen anyone. I mean, I have looked up some decks to try to get inspiration, but unfortunately all the decks that I've seen online, the Blackwing decks suck. Or they're just like a really bad combination. 
they, they need some work. I mean, all decks could use a little TLC and then they become better. But this, I've been just using it constantly, and I love it. Unfortunately, I use Blackbird uh, Close a lot more often than I use Black Shadow Squall. But I have used Black Shadow Squall before, but it's because I only run one copy of it. If you need it, it's searchable. If you don't, well then, you're probably never going to see it during the duel. But Blackbird Close, the reason why I like this, even though you have to send a face-up Blackwing monster to the grave to activate it, so that way you can negate a monster effect, is it's a counter trap. So that's really good. Let me see. When do you put it? Destroy. Yeah, then. So it, it's not going to get rid of like a Dragoon because it destroys. But it is good to be able to negate like a lot of other shit that could be really freaking annoying. So uh, the other bonus effect is that you still get to replace something with it. So that Blackwing monster that you just lost, you get to replace it with a Blackwing freaking dragon. So that's pretty good. And uh, you special. Yeah, it just a special summon, right? Well, Black Feather Whirlwind just has special summon, so you get to activate this on your opponent's turn. You get a Black Feather Whirlwind again, special summon something from the Banisher to the Graveyard Pile for free. Boom! There you go. That's what I'm talking about. And then Black Shadow War uh, Black Shadow Squall is basically the the counterpart to Blackbird Close. This does monster effects. This does spells and traps. But you have to. It's a different type of requirement for tribute. You have to tribute a Black Feather counter from your field. And if you control Blackwing Dragon, you can set this card from your grave. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I almost never used that, though. But he is limited to... You can only activate one once per turn, whereas this one... Uh, this one is not, right? Yes, this one is not. So that's the reason why I only run one Black Shadow Squall. I don't want to ever be tempted to run more than one. Okay, and going into the extra deck, I just have one level 5. I don't think that I've ever made him a tuner before, because I don't see how I could. Actually, yeah. But he is nice. When this card is Synchro Summon, you can target one Assault Blackwing monster in a grave and Special Summon it. Uh, so these guys, right? It, it, he's almost like an Obsidian Hawk Joe. Except it's only when he's Synchro Summon. But you can pull one of these guys from the grave and put it on the field. So, so that's not bad. Actually, he's a Black Assault Blackwing as well. So I guess technically you could pull him. But I almost never summon this guy, but he's a nice to have. I summon this guy all the time. He Foolish Burials, one of your... So when he hits the field, he Foolish Burials one of your Black Wings from the deck. Well, I guess that's what Foolish Burial means. But And then he copies that level. Excuse me. So often I'll copy a level 4. Because I'm going to send Zephyros. I love sending Zephyros. You, you can, oh, this is where I send Shamal to the grave sometimes. Is using the Wicked Winds effect. Because I want to become level 4 badly. If Zephyros is already in the grave, I try to go after the Shamal. Because she gets a benefit in the grave as well. Southwind also does. But... Usually I'm going after the Shamal. And then he also has another effect, which I rarely use. I think only maybe once. So when he destroys a monster, then I can special summon the destroyed monster to my field in defense position. It's sort of like the, uh, the Goyo Guardian, right? Where he Goyo Lariats it back over to your side of the field. It is nice to be able to keep your opponent from having shit that they want in the grave in the grave. Because it's sitting on your field now. So one of the things about this deck, especially with the extra deck portion of it, you will have a ton of monsters on your field. Thank God for Master Rule ever since 4, right? And then in Master Rule 5, they made it a lot more lenient for Synchros and Xyz and shit and Fusions. You're going to use all six of your monster zones, just FYI. So I also have No Thong. He gives you the extra normal summon. Also, you're, you can inflict 800 damage to your opponent, as well as lower one of the... And it doesn't target. So this guy will be able to down Dragoons... Uh, Red Eyes Dark Dragoons attack by 800, which is pretty good. And then, of course, you get an extra normal summon. So, I, I like this guy if I've got the Black Whirlwind on the field. And then Hawk Joe, he allows you to... So, so you can special summon a level 5 or higher Black Wing... Uh, is it Synchro? Uh, no, it's just Wing Beast type monster in your grave. Special summon it. But he also allows you to direct attacks to certain targets. Let me see, you can target... Uh, when your opponent activates a card during ETH, when your opponent activates oh, that targets a opponent targets this card, you can target one other. Oh, no, no, no. I thought it was attacks. That card effect. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. Card effects and attacks. So you can redirect it, basically. So that's the reason why I really like this guy. Uh, every now and then he shows up. And then you've got Chidori. I like this guy for the attack boost. That's about it. I think he has been destroyed one time, and I did get to activate his effect, but um, I, I rarely ever use him. This guy I'll use more often, the Rai Cutie. And that is because of his ability, the other Black Wings that are on the field. I can pop number of cards on my opponent's side of the field equal to the other number of Black Wing monsters, so it's usually quite a bit, like two or more. 
whenever I summon this guy. And then Blackwing Dragon, you have to run two of these. You often will at least summon one. And then, hell, if you have Blackbird close, you're probably going to summon two that game. So it's really good. And then also, you could easily summon it with uh, one of the twin shadows that you have. Uh, Draco Berserker, I mean, it's just because he's Draco Berserker. Uh, again, Scarlight, just because he's Scarlight. Beelza, just because he's Beelza. They're, they're dark synchros, right? So it meets the requirement for Blackfeather Whirlwind. But um, also, they're pretty good, right? Being able to do something, affect your opponent in some way. Opening up with Beals is pretty good. Open up with Dragon Berserk is pretty good. But these three can be modified in any way you see fit. I think that if you took out Abyss from this deck, you're making a mistake. He's so good. Once per turn to another player's turn, he can negate. Uh, it doesn't negate and destroy, but it does stop the stupid... Well, let me see. You target one face-up card, your opponent controls negate. So many times, it stopped a Rage uh, Rageki. It is stopped a Rageki for me, so that's really good. Full Armor Master, there's a reason why this guy's like 8 bucks Or 5 bucks if you're lucky on TCG Player. I was looking at him, and he's like $5.55. And that was for a moderately played version. I was like, fuck that. I am not going to spend that much money on him yet. I'm going to wait. But he's unaffected by card effect, uh, other card effects, right? And also, he's a better version. I You see that I don't run Full Armor Master. No, not Full Armor Master. Just regular Armor Master. Blackwing Armor Master. I don't care about him. Oh, he can't be destroyed by... Ba so summon him in defense, but I don't care about him. It's so easy to get rid of him. A, a, a simple hammer shot, a, a smashing ground, a, a hammer shot, whatever it is, can get rid of this guy. Not this guy. Not to mention his wedge counters do a lot more good. The number of times that I've stolen my opponent's monsters because they had wedge counters on them, and then obviously during the end phase, if you should decide, you can destroy all monsters on the field that have a wedge counter. Remember who mentioned wedge counters? Place one wedge counter on each face-up monster your opponent controls that does not have one. And then at the end phase, BOOM! It's a Raigeki! Holy shit! That's good. And he's fairly easy to make. He's a level 10. So the only thing that you can't make using him is obviously the Gen X Allied Birdman, because he does require Blackwing Tuner. But the, uh, oh, and then I guess also the Salt Synchron. I forgot about that. More often than not, though, if you open up, you want to try to get Full Armor Master. It depends on the situation, but you probably want to bring out Full Armor Master because he's 3,000 and he's unaffected by card effects. So. No, change of, um, no change of heart. No creature swap, none of that annoying shit, no Raigeki, uh, and then Blackwing Assault Dragon. This guy is actually fairly cheap. I can't believe he was 23 bucks when I went to Japan. That is ridiculous. He should not be that expensive. But the idea behind him is that you can special summon him for free by banishing the, uh, let me see. Or special summon from your extra deck. Don't synchro summon him. You're stupid if you're synchro summon him. Special summon him. From your extra deck by banishing one tuner synchro monster and one blackwing dragon from your face up field and or gray. Each time your opponent, uh, okay, so that's the first thing. Summon Onimaru using your blackwing dragon and your wicked wind that you just made level four by foolish burialing, right? Take those two monsters, level eight and level four, make Onimaru. Now he gets that 3000 attack boost and then banish them from the grave to bring out a blackwing assault dragon for free. Now, on to the other part of him. Uh, each time your opponent activates a monster effect, place one black feather counter on this card when that effect resolves. Okay, that's good for Black Shadow Squall now. And then also, oh, oh and that's also good for Black Feather Whirlwind, right? Because they both involve removing Black Feather counters. And then uh, place one Black Feather, and, the, and then you inflict 700 damage to your opponent. So they activate a monster effect, you place a Black Feather counter on him, and then inflict 700 damage. The amount of times that I've just like whittled down my opponent by like 2100 life points and then they're like whoa what the fuck is going on and then they realize that they should probably slow down there otherwise they're going to put themselves at a significant disadvantage when i hit them with the fucking onimaru the next turn the divine thunder so uh, again we're, uh, we're basically moving on at this point he's can't be destroyed by card effects and again 3000 attack during the battle phase if you summon him the right way like like the way that i'm telling you to summon that's the right way don't do it the normal way that's pretty well it for the the main deck and the extra deck so we'll move on to the replays so where do i have the black wings here so i really like to be able oh i don't have that many but i guess that's because i only like to keep the ones that i think really showcase what i'm trying to convey through this deck profile 
So I duel against a lot of the tough AIs in here, so that way I can really show you the potential against different styles of decks that have different objectives in mind, what you can do in retaliation, as well as putting up a guard. So we'll go ahead against this one. So you have the Black Feather Whirlwind. You always want to play that, or if you have a regular Black Whirlwind, so that way you can start getting some bonuses once you've been able to perform some Synchroing. So you have your Sudri the Phantom Glimmer. So you normal summon him, and then you're going to add a card, any card, it could be spell, trap, monster, that mentions Blackwing Dragon from your deck to your hand. So what are we going to choose? Okay, oh right, uh, I, I love summoning Vata so much because of his ability to basically give you, especially with Black for the Whirlwind, two free Synchro Summons. So I go ahead, modulate, special summon. So you saw what I just sent, right? I sent a, an extra Homoctin from the deck to the grave, but then I saw sent Zephyrus. So Zephyrus will be able to bounce something back. You could actually bounce back your Black Feather Whirlwind now that you are about to use its effect. But um, you've got your Black Feather, uh, your Black Wing Dragon now, and you're about to get something back for free. I always like to go after my tuners since I've got more non-tuners than I do tuners. So I want to be able to pull back Vata so that way I can take that plus the Sudri to go into the level six non tune uh, the uh, level six tuner synchro black wing yeah the wicked wing so let's see it oh and then yeah i could also go ahead and use the black wing dragon for that so i guess there are multiple things that you could have done with that but let's see what i keep doing Okay, see, that's another option for you to do. And now you've got a guy that can negate anything, a guy that's unaffected, and a guy that can redirect targets and attacks. Play it again. Banish. And remember, this guy... I, I had forgotten this because I use him so often in my Resonator Jack Atlas deck. He, when he inflicts damage, it's any tuner! I forgot about that. So it could be an Assault Synchron, it could be a Gen X, well actually probably not Gen X Halliburton, he's going to banish himself. But it could even be your Tuner Synchro! Oh my god, that's good! So and then uh, obviously I could have special summoned Vata, the, 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 what the hell is he, the Emblem of Wandering. And then activate his effect again to bring out a free Blackwing Dragon practically. So that would be really good, and then you obviously get Black for the Whirlwind's effect. And that was basically going against a, uh, a Blue Eyes Chaos Max deck. Something that you need to be able to get over something that has 4,000 attack. How do you do that? Onimaru is who you're going to be targeting. He didn't have out the Chaos Max, so I was able to be a little more liberal with my thinking rather than just going straight to the target. A big boss. So then you've got your Black Feather, you've got your Black Whirlwind. You're obviously going to want to normal summon this guy so that we can bring like a tuna, probably a Vata again, and then you can special summon, special summon. And I almost never use Chinook. I, I really don't. I never really find the need to. But you've got a Blackbird close, so we might be bringing out two Blackwing Dragons as dual. Oh, he negated. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. So we've got the extra special summon, and then we've got two more special summons coming up. Send Zephyros, obviously. Bounce it back. And special summon it again. Level modulate. There you go, the Onimaru and the Blackwing Dragon that you get a summon for free. And then there you go, like 6,000 to the face. And then he activated a monster effect, so that's 700. And then attack again for the 32, and I halved both of their attacks because of being able to activate Gale's effect twice. That's, like, really freaking good. I don't, I don't know how it's explained. You just need to use it yourself, I guess. And then, um, practice, practice, practice. Oh my god, practice. You're not going to get it right the first time, I assure you. Unless you're a, a Tensai. A genius. Here you go. Poison. The Poison Guy's effect. Extra Normal Summon.
Boom! There you go. Just swarm the field. I'm telling you. You're going to be sw If you're doing this right, you're going to be swarming the field constantly. Because that's what this deck is intended to do. And then obviously, you sh uh, if, if there is going to be a next turn, God forbid, there probably will not be. But Black Shadow Squall, set that, and then just take off one of the Black Feather counters here from your Black Wing Dragon. That's the reason why I'm keeping him on the field with some Black Feather counters is because I've got Black Shadow Squall. And then you get to negate any, if he decides to activate his field spell, nope, that ain't happening. And then uh, I hate adventures. Oh god, they're so annoying. With this one card, they practically get to bring out everything. And then here comes the griffin, or, oh, oh no griffin yet? Oh, there's the stupid griffin, I hate the griffin. That's one free negate. Get an extra normal summon. Get to bring out that, activate it. Pop those fucking cards because they're annoying. Your main objective, your main objective with um, adventures is to get rid of that stupid token, because when it's got the equip spell, the fateful adventure will keep it from being able to be destroyed. And then also, I think Griffin's ability to special summon itself for free is based on the token. So we'll see what happens here. Okay, that's fine. Who cares? That's all he can do. And that's it. I, I like the ability to be able to replenish myself, my hand, my field, just using stuff from, uh, you can easily pull it from the deck, but also from the graveyard and the banish pile. That's what makes Black Wings so powerful. So this is another example of me going first. So here we go, classic example. There you go. You, you've just opened yourself up with a guy that can not only do shit with wedge counters when it comes time, but he's unaffected by card effects. When he starts activating monster effects, that they're going to be taking 700 damage. Once you have enough black feather counters, obviously you can pop the entire field. This guy who can redirect attacks and effects, and then obviously during the next turn he can start special summoning stuff like... Actually, I think I already have him. But he can start bringing back stuff like the Onimaru or the Full Armor Master when it, come time, when it comes time. Um, actually, he's a dragon, so it will only be the wingy these guys. And then if he activates a monster effect, Draco Berserker can banish. And then, of course, you've got the guy who cannot be destroyed by card effects and also has 6,000 attack when it comes battle phase, so... I was trying to take control of it with full armor master. That was the idea there. See, and then this 2800, psh, bitch like I care, 6,000 over you. I think, is this the one that's, uh, any card sent from the field to the grave is banished instead. This is a very good card. This virtual world QB, oh, no wonder that's the reason why it's a virtual world monster. For some reason, I was thinking it was a sheer Nui monster. I was looking for it for what was it? I think from a Light Swarm deck. And I could not find it. That's the reason why. It's a virtual world monster. God, fucking QB. Anyway, so that that's the idea behind this. It's it's so good. Like, that, that Twin Shadow. You saw that bonus special summon that I got out of that. You can use that to your advantage so often. It's so good. Uh, and then Vayu is kind of sitting a little dead in your hand, but... That's okay. Th this is another guy that if you if he's useless in your hand, you can banish him for the poison guy's effect. That's pretty well it. Yeah, 
There you go, bring it right back. Here it comes. Onimaru and the Blackwing Dragon Assault, eventually. I mean, keep activating monster effects. This guy is so good. Like, this is the reason why Blackwing Dragons is going to be so tough. Well, actually, it's... Oh, he's the guy that's on Black Feather Whirlwind. Because he's got the red hair. Uh, well, the reddish-orange hair, I guess. That's supposed to be indicative, I think, of Crow Hogan. So, that is the power. And then, of course, you, you set your Black Shadow Squall because he's got Black Feather counters, right? And your Black Sonic. Actually, technically, you don't even have to set Black Sonic, right? You've got more than enough Black Wings on your field. The only reason why I like setting this sometimes is maybe he'll right get you some shit. Well, actually, I guess that would be bad. Although, Full Armor Master would still be on the field. So, then you would have to set Black Sonic in order to activate its effect. But, sometimes you can just keep it in your hand. And if they're stupid enough to attack, then Black Sonic they're at. So, that's pretty well it. That is the Black Wings in a nutshell. Very powerful. I like it. I mean, you can modify it however you see fit, but that is, um, that's the idea, and I'm hoping to be able to bring more of these deck profiles. I'll go, god damn, I have a tendency to always make them super long. I'm going to try to not explain so much in the next one. But these Black Wings, I, I feel like they need a lot of explaining because they've got a lot of new cards. But enjoy!